How are we doing guys? Always should be Leeds versus Huddersfield match preview of the game. So guys, 10 games to go. 10 games to go now guys, 10 games to go. But I'm looking forward to it guys, I'll be honest, I'm looking forward to it. Look, it's a tough game tomorrow. All games at this level are tough. You know, Huddersfield last time out, I watched the highlights of their game uh, against Charleston and they looked really good. Look, obviously Charleston weren't at, weren't at it on the day, but they were a good team, Huddersfield. You know, they're not really as poor as what their league position would suggest. You know, they've got some good players in that team. You have Smith Rowe, Ahern Grant. They're the two names that sort of jump out straight away to an extent. Obviously, Willick, good player as well. And, you know, they've got a good team and a good balance about them. And look, the test of the last time out at, at Huddersfield, you know, it was a real test for us. We won the game 2 0. It was a professional win for us, but it was not an easy game at all. You know, if they took one of their early chances in that first half, maybe it would have been a different game. And I think Huddersfield have improved since then. You know, I think certainly in recent weeks, 10 points out of the last six, is a tough game. Um, you know, it is a tough game. Look, Huddersfield are still fighting for their lives. I think they're good enough to stay up. I think they will stay up personally. I think there's a lot, there's definitely three worse teams in this league than Huddersfield at the minute. And yeah, of course, you know, I think in, in recent form, you'd have to say there is at the minute. There is, um, you know, three worse teams in Huddersfield. So it's a big test for us. Um, a massive test. I've just, just got to show we can cope with it. You know, I think obviously, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about the nerves. Are they going to tell? You know, it's going to get more and more pressure. We can't be talking about pressure now. You know, we can't talk about pressure now. You know, look, there's still ten games to go. You know, we, we, for me personally, I don't feel we can talk about the pressure. You know, we're playing really well. Four wins in a row. I think the pressure comes if we drop points, or if we make a mess of things, or if we make a mistake. You know, we allow Fulham into the promotion race again. You know, that's where I think the pressure comes in. But at this stage of the season, I'd like to think the players are just focusing on their job. You know, focusing on the job in hand. Maybe with five or six games to go, you start really looking at that league table and thinking, well, if this happens today and Fulham do this, we need to panic. But for me, it's all about what we do at the minute. It's still all about what we do. We know roughly for the last ten games, we need to win six or seven of them to get promoted. Maybe we'll need less. Who knows? But we know roughly that's what we need to do. We need to roughly get ourselves onto 85, 86, 87 points for promotion. Maybe Fulham will go on a massive run. Who knows? But roughly we know what we need to do. And that's not going to be an easy task. Let's remember. I know with so many points clear, etc, etc, all of a sudden it's looking like a free horse race. But it's not going to be an easy task. You know, still we're talking, you know, winning more than half our games in this level. You know, this level's tough. You know, we've got some tough games to come. So we've got to take it each game as it goes. Each game as it comes. You know, it's simple as that. Each game's going to pro, you know, it's just a dumb challenge, and, that, and that's a simple fact. Against Huddersfield, you're going to face a young team that's going to press the ball really well. I think certainly since Danny Cowley's come in, you know, really to talk about the tactics of the game. You know, I think I've rambled on there for about three minutes, uh, not really spoken about the tactics of the game. But you know, Danny Cowley's going to try and do the same thing he did, you know, away from home when we played them away from home. You know, it's going to be very much a young team pressing the ball well, be quite direct when they get when they're in possession. You know, a lot of long balls, a lot of flick-ons from Grant. And I think that's where you look at this Leeds team and think the defence is still quite short for a championship defence. You know, we've not got many players above six foot. You know, White, Cooper, excellent on the ground defensively. But I think sometimes you know, they're not particularly poor in the air as such. You just, if you put a little bit of height against them, maybe you win a couple of flick-ons. But on the ground, you, when you try to play through that defence, it's a very tough ask. You know, Aylin, Dallas, fantastic fullbacks. It's arguably the best back four in the league. For me, it is the best back four in the league. Um, so I can't see Huddersfield trying to play football as such against us, but they are going to—they're probably going to be a bit more direct than what they usually would. And obviously, Fern Grant is the focal point of this attack, and now through people like Smith Rowe, Willick running off him for the flick-ons and that lot, and that, and that may gives us a bit of a test. You know, of, of course, we've got pace, um, a lot of strength, and, and it will be a test from that sense um, defensively. I'm still not convinced by the Huddersfield team. I think we will get opportunities to break this Huddersfield team down. Yeah, we certainly did away from home. You know, we had a couple of chances to you know, win the game more comfortably. Um, of course, they could have scored goals at the other end, but I think defensively, you know, I think they've still got a lot of work to do. Huddersfield, personally, um, you know, I think they will definitely not be relying on that back four, like some teams have done at Ellen Road this season. You know, certainly look at Reading, Bristol City, set up very defensively. I think Huddersfield might be a little bit more open. I think they will be looking to score goals because I think they know defensively there's still a lot of work to do. I know they've brought in people like Danny Simpson. Um, I can't remember his name now, but they did have someone quite experienced at left back as well, whose name has escaped me at the minute. Um, but they did bring him in in January. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I forgot his name now. But anyway, yeah, they've got experience in that back four. But I still think we can break that back four down. I think Huddersfield know that as well. 
You know, I think obviously a big factor in Huddersfield's improvement in form has been that you know the the Cowleys have kind of set them up to be a bit more attacking. You know, they're trying to score goals now. That's a big part of their you know their features. Really, they are very much an on the ball team. Um, and and yeah, I'm not saying they're going to turn up to Ellen Road and play at like Barcelona. I just think they're not definitely not going to sit back and defend like a Red or Bristol City for me. I certainly don't think that's going to be a strategy they go with. They're very much a four-two-three-one team. They'll probably allow the two. They'll probably keep the two sitting midfielders back. But I certainly think that front four is just going to be pushing forward. I don't think it's going to be a case of the wingers are going to be coming back to protect the fullbacks. I think they're all going to be pushing forward, and it's very much going to be you know a four-on-four four situation between our back four and their front four. Um, but yeah, I think there's plenty of areas we can hurt them. I think certainly in the midfield, I think you know the, the big chance for them is stopping Mateus Click. I think Mateus Click is arguably in the best form of his league's career, the best form of his career. You know, he's, I think his stance he's set over the last 18 months have been fantastic. But I think just since the new year, he's just stepped up that next level for me. He set to that next level. He was getting more goals, getting more assists. He's just stepped to that next level. You know, I think he's an absolutely fantastic player, one of the top three players in the league for me. Um, certainly the best player in this team, which is no mean feat, by the way. You know, being a, but for me, I think he has transitioned into being the best player in the team. You know, of course, you can say Calvin Phillips, but for me, I don't think there's anyone in this team that can do all the different things Mateus Click does. You know, creativity, defensive awareness, pressing, relentless pressing, passing ability. And just find a fantastic engine and just a crucial, crucial part of this team. And that's what Huddersfield have got to try and find someone from their team to cope with that. You know, of course, probably Trevor Chalaber is probably the most likely player. But again, Trevor Chalaber, promising player, definitely a promising player, but inconsistent, inconsistent he is. Um, certainly got some elements of his, of his game. Um, you know, we saw from Ipswich last season when he was there. Obviously, he was Ipswich's star player last season. Yes, it was in a relegation threatened team, a team that would go down. But he was definitely the, the stand-up player in that team. You know, he's got a great engine. He can drift past players, but I think he's got a big challenge against Matthias Click, and that's really one of the areas that you know Huddersfield look at and think, you know, they'll probably try and be aggressive against Matthias Click. They'll probably try and put two or three players on Matthias Click. So it's all about using that and building from that. Maybe it frees up space for Pablo Hernandez, held the cost of Jack Harrison. I just thought against Hull, the movement of the midfield was fantastic. The whole understanding of that midfield. Yeah, of course, it looks like Patrick Bamford is going to start this game. Um, you know, for me, personally, I would have gone Tyler Roberts. But, off, you know, Bamford, you know, I think, of course, he, he, we're going to stay low to him. It's, it'll be else away. You know, it's not a surprise to me that Bamford's starting the game. But I certainly think it's a game where Bamford has got to score or has got to make a telling contribution. Because, look, I've defended Bamford all season. And I think rightly I've defended Bamford all season. I think he's been much improved on last season. But last couple of weeks... I just think we start to see the Bamford from last season. Yeah, I really want to see a response from Bamford. Yeah, he's been taken off with 25 minutes to go against Hull. I want to see a response now, Patrick Bamford. You know, it's the first time when Bielsa's kind of questioned Bamford to an extent. You know, he's taking him off willingly at 2 0 up in the game. I just think it's a could be a potentially a, a, a stroke of genius from Marcelo Bielsa if he gets a response from Patrick Bamford. Because I think the last couple of weeks, look, his pressing, his work rate has been good this season. We all know about his finishing. He should have more goals. You know, he's got an XG of double the amount of goals he's scored. So that's a concern, isn't it? That's a concern. You know, he's got an XG of almost 24 and he's scored 12 goals. You know, he needs, he needs to step up in that regard. But his performances need to step up as well. You know, I've defended Bamford all season. I've had stick with defending Bamford all season. But genuinely, they have dropped as well for me. He's not been playing well really recently. You know, even in terms of the best elements of his game, I think have not been as good. Yeah, against Middlesbrough. A couple of other games he's, he's done okay, but I still think consistency wise, last couple of games, last 10 games, I just think we need more of Patrick Bamford now. And you know, of defensive, I've been a Patrick Bamford. I still think he's a top player um, at this level. I think technically he's got a lot of quality at this level. His finishing is always he's needed m m um, improvement all season. You know, I've, I've never said it hasn't, but I think he has been a key part of the team in certain aspects. But last couple of weeks, I think to, to be honest, I think he has probably been the one player you look at and think. Yes, he might be the player you think. You know, if results start to dip, you know, uh, we've got to look at that. And, you know, Tyler Roberts comes on, he scores two fantastic finishes. He has an all overall impact on the game. It's big pressure on Patrick Bamford. If Patrick Bamford has another quiet game, then yeah, I think he only has himself to blame. You know, it has to be Tyler Roberts all day long for me. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting one. But, yeah, the midfield, I think, is combining well. I think it's worth it working really well. Uh, I think Helder Costa, Jack Harrison are getting stronger by the game. You know, I think hopefully, you know, Helder Costa is going to start 
turn into the match winner we know he can be. He has all the potential to be the best winger in the league. You know, he's shown glimpses of it all season. Let's just see it in the game now. Let's see him really, really take control of the game. Take a game out of the scruff of the neck. You know, take it, like, take the game and just win it for us. You know, goal from distance. Fantastic piece of skill. Creating the winner, you know, etc, etc. Let's just see how the Costa made that match winning contribution now. Because that's the only thing we're missing now. You know, of course, we have to remember we've committed to £15 million on this player. We need a match winning contribution. You know, we need to see that element of his game. I think he's a very, very good player. I think he's shown fantastic glimpses. I think his work rate is massively, massively improved. And that's all credit to him. But now we just need that one last little bit of belief now that he can really win games for us. And that's my only criticism. I have to agree with Connor and Joe on it. I think both of I think Costa especially has massively stepped up the last couple of weeks. We just need a telling contribution now. You know, to really... You know, to get the rewards for it, you know, get in terms of goals, in terms of assists, you know, just to improve on that a little bit. I think Pablo has been really improved in the um, deep, you know, the deep playmaking role, and yeah, I think the whole team and the back four, as I mentioned, so I, I'm really, I, you know, I feel com I feel comfortable, guys. I, I feel, yeah, you know, I do feel relaxed. Yeah, you know, I feel relaxed. You know, certainly compared to last season, you know, we're kind of we're getting weaker by this stage. You know, we're getting starting to show signs of tiredness, inconsistency. I think at the minute. The last four or five games have been consistently really, really good. I think we could have won every single game other than Brentford. Um, well, you know, we've won every every game other than Brentford. Yeah, we have to be confident, guys. There's no real real reason to feel pressure at the minute. We only feel real pressure when we make a mistake. When we make a mistake at the minute, we're flying high. And if we can win enough games consecutively, we could do the job early doors. You know, we could do the job early doors. As I said, at the start of the season, it made a ma massive difference when we won seven games in a row. You know, let's aim for that again. Why not? Let's aim for it again. We're playing really, really well. We're playing better than we did in that seven-game winning run. Let's be positive, guys. Let's be positive. We just need that one... Yeah, you know, we don't even need it so much because we're still winning games, but that's the one thing we just want. That one little bit of quality of Costa. You know, more goals of Bamford. Just a, you know, a little tiny bit. You know, I think, I think everyone's playing the part. Um, and yeah, that's just the one thing. Yeah, you know, I think we're doing absolutely fantastic. But just that one extra percent if you like for us to start winning games like we did against Hull more comfortably I think obviously that Hull game you, know, you can say we've come back off, off a 4-0 win I have to say that Hull team was particularly poor you know no disrespect to Hull they were particularly poor so we need to just show that we can do those kind of performances against stronger teams you know, I think Huddersfield are a stronger team than Hull um, you know they've beaten Hull twice this season so you know I think it's going to be a tougher game I definitely think it's going to be a tougher game and you know the pressure's on the pressure's on. It's just all about what we do now, guys. And let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy this. You know, the last ten games. It's all about the journey, not the final result. The final result will be fantastic. You know, I want nothing less than to be to be dancing around the Millennium Square at the end of the season. But um, you know, let's enjoy the journey. Let's not feel the pressure. Let's just enjoy what we're doing. And guys, I'm going to leave it there. I've been absolutely rambling like a madman. I'm going to leave it there, guys. I've been Oscar. Make sure you check out Connor and Joe's match previews of the game. See you later, guys. I've been Oscar. All these to be. See you later, guys.